Hi, this is James Kandasamy. Thanks for joining me on a nice, uh, lovely Saturday evening um, and taking time to go through this webinar with me. Um, the company is Achieve Investment Group and uh, basically I would like to do a webinar today on how to analyze multifamily market on real time using any free online resources. Um, a lot of times I've worked with investors um, that you know always talks about different market um, but there's no data behind it and for example you know people always say you know for example uh, Dallas is hard or Atlanta is hard or Austin is really good or uh, Phoenix is slowing down or Austin is slowing down so basically what we want to do uh, today is to learn on how to look at that data on a monthly basis so that anybody can access to this data on a real-time basis. Um, as for myself, I, I own like 300 over units right now, multifamily in Central Texas, especially in San Antonio area. And um, I like to analyze things and I like to share uh, my knowledge as well with others, especially um, passive investors because I want to make sure that anybody investing in multifamily, uh, especially into any specific market, know where they are going and they know themselves on how a specific market is performing. So um, everybody can see my slides and uh, hear me right. Uh, please confirm that before I move on to the slides and to look at some real-time data. Okay, good. So. <laughs> loud and clear. So as a disclaimer, uh, this information is confidential. Well, it's not really confidential. I took it from the previous slide. But it's, it's, uh, it's providing information, education, and training. Um, but whatever this information contains, uh, we have compiled it from different sources, which we have uh, cited in this uh, slide. And uh, there is no financial information being shared here except for what's out there on a public domain uh, but any data that we're going to share here should be used for education and training and should not be used for any financial decisions. So as the objective of this webinar, let me just make this a bit smaller, um, objective of the webinar, show investors available resources to analyze any major multifamily markets for free and quickly. Um, let me show this data. Uh, so the truth is, uh, any commercial real estate, including multifamily, uh, the market is cyclic, right? So this is basically um, a chart that came from. Um, let me let me make this a full size. Uh, okay. So this is a chart that came from uh, IRR, Integra Realty Resources. This is where like 5,000 over appraiser all over the country report back to this uh, to this uh, IRR company uh, and they own a lot of MAI which is a appraiser designation so all data from appraisers goes to them and throughout the nation and this shows the four cycles of uh, multifamily uh, market stages, uh, which shows between uh, expansion, a cycle called expansion, hypersupply, recession, and, and recovery. And they publish this data on a very frequent basis, which I'm going to go through in a short while. Um, this shows the you know different um, cities at which state they are, right? So I don't want to go through in detail uh, of this, because you can go and access this in, uh, in the public domain, which I'm going to show in a short while. But basically, there's four. four stages uh, starting from uh, recovery, expansion, hypersupply, and re recession. And fundamentally during recovery uh, the rent rate is growing, uh, the vacancies are lower, uh, there's low new construction, there's less absorption, uh, and during recession it's completely opposite which is basically increasing vacancy rates, moderate, low new construction, low absorption, low rental rate growth. So basically the, the the rent grow from here to here and after that start declining from here to from hypersupply and becoming really bad at recession. 
right? So as I mentioned, this is from uh, Integra Real Theory Resources, which I'm going to share the link, and anybody can go and download this report uh, and see. So going to the next slide, this basically what what we did, uh, what I did was basically took 14 years of IRR data uh, and chart just Austin specifically because uh, I focus a lot on uh, Austin, San Antonio, which more of a San Antonio, but the thing is uh, there's not much data on San Antonio from uh, past 14 years, even though nowadays like I think past six, seven years, there is data. So I just took Austin data because Austin data has been there since 2003. So what I did is I took the uh, the cycle over here and just mark, you know, one, two, three. If you see in this chart, uh, the recovery is one, uh, two, three, and then four, five, six, seven, until 12. And what I did is for Austin specifically, I just plotted over here, starting from 2003 to 2017 and shows uh, what is how does the cycle perform in terms of multifamily uh, especially in Austin and this as I said I only did for Austin anybody can go and do for any uh, major city uh, in the country the IR report uh, does give that um, I don't think so the uh, more than one year data is available uh, I was able to get it uh, more than 14 years data so if anybody wants the all the 14 years data, let me know and I can share that with you guys. I have all the 14 years report. Uh, but if you look at it, you know, if I just plot it this way, recovery, expansion, hypersupply and, and recession and it shows that how the market uh, performed for the past 14 years just specifically for Austin. And I was looking for like 2008, what was, it's like a stock market, right? I'm trying to predict uh, what happened during the recession, did the market flow through what it's supposed to go through in terms of the the cycle on the stages uh, but it it, it, it uh, it's not really um, completely true especially at 2008 because 2008 it went from number two which is recovery and suddenly it went to recession it went from two and then went to seven uh, recovery and then hyper supply and then went to recession so and after that it recovered back uh, to three which is basically a recovery mode again but some some places it does it does flow through the stages, uh, especially 2003, and then after that came down to 2004, and after that in 2005, and then dropped down to 2008. That follows the cycle as well. So right now, for the past uh, 2000, since 2012 to 2000, for the past five years, Austin market has been on uh, expansion mode. This is just a sample for Austin. Uh, as I said, this data is available uh, in the public domain. Uh, if you want more than 14 years, just send me a mail and I'll give you guys all the 14 years and you can go and plot this manually. This is a manual process. Um, so let's just quickly go through the next slide here. Okay, so this is the fun part. So what I'm gonna show you is how to analyze the any market uh, using three reports available uh, online. One is called uh, ALNdata.com, uh, Monthly Market News. We're going to go through uh, a few city report over there, and uh, we probably can choose some city which any of you want to analyze, and we can analyze it together. Uh, the second one is Yardi Metrics Monthly Report. Uh, you have to go and subscribe it um, to this uh, website, uh, and then you get a monthly report on that. And the last one is IRR Report, which is all the appraisers uh, putting in data and that goes into annual and media reports uh, and the link is over here. So so let's get started and uh, let's do the alndata.com market reviews and we're gonna go a bit more detail into any market that we wanna analyze. Um, so, so I will, let me make sure everybody can see Can you all see the my browser? Everybody can see my browser, right? You all can see this browser, right? The uh, market reviews, airline uh, apartment data. Okay, let me see. All right, sorry, I didn't scroll down this question window. So. In this market review, uh, this is a free website, alndata.com slash, if you go to market review, uh, you have, you can choose any 
city over here that you want to analyze. So is there a specific city anybody want to look at and we can uh, quickly go through it? You can type in the question box. Okay, Houston, San Antonio, <laughs> Phoenix. Okay, let's do Houston. Um, we can go into Houston. Let me see where's Houston. Texas, uh, Houston. So when you click on Houston, so it's very important because you want to see these and you want to make your own decision on where to analyze because the market swing is important on top of uh, the deal, the market uh, situation is correct. So, so let's go through the Houston. So each one of ALN data has the same format. It has these charts, these two charts, occupancy rate, market versus effective rents, on the left side, there's two green boxes, uh, Houston Market General Overview and Houston Market Stabilized Property. So let me explain slowly here. So this box on the top left is actually all the A class, right? Uh, and then the, this box down here, the stabilized property is actually A, B, and C. But in general, is you know, it's going to look at, you're going to look at B and C more over here. And the top left is the A class. And the important data that you want to see in this city is basically how does a new inventory, so everybody has new inventory being built uh, on each city and if you build too much it's going to be oversupply so then the, your rent growth is going to go down, right? You have to give a lot more concession to get your rent back up again. So for example, you want to look at occupancy, yeah, 87.9 right now, average Houston data, which is an annual change, less 1.7% 1, 1 compared to last year. Uh, the units added and unit absorbed is a two very key indicators. So units added, basically they have built 10,573 units, but there's only 8,000 units uh, uh, being absorbed. That means people come in into the city this is jobs growth. Uh, this unit unit absorb is a reflection of job growth. So 10,000 units were built, but only 8,000 were absorbed. So this is a, there's 2,000 over units which is oversupply. So this is not a very favorable uh, indicator. That means there's too many supply in the city. It's not trending well. The second one that second data that you want to see, which is important. I mean, there's a lot of data. I don't think so. You have to look at everything. Just look at jobs. This shows that you know there's not enough jobs to absorb all the multifamily units there. The second one is basically on the stabilized property, the number of percentage offering concession. What it means is, uh, so to explain about concession, concession is basically any property management company giving some discounts to renters so that they can come and rent. So the higher concession means they have to um, what you call uh, attract, they want to attract, uh, they are finding it hard to attract tenants and they start giving a lot more concession. So this plus 37% basically shows compared to last year, this year there's 37% more people are giving concession, which is not a very favorable indicator as well for city of Houston here. So the 32% doesn't make a lot of difference, a lot of, um, it doesn't give you a lot of impact, but plus 37%, it does give you a lot of impact. That means compared to last year, there's 37% more companies are giving concession, which is not a good trend if you look at a market. And uh, the occupancy rate, I don't really look at it just so much because this is very cyclic. Uh, it goes by, you know, if you look at the small peaks and uh, dips and valleys here, it basically shows the, you know, some, maybe in summer it was at peak and in winter it goes down. So, but this is, I don't look at it so much, but if you look at this market versus effective rents, this is a very important indicator. So if you see the the market is the uh, the market is the blue line, whereas the effective is the maroon line, and the delta between it, the the space between this blue line and the maroon line is an important indicator on where are they trending. So for example, if you look at in 2007 and 2010, if you see it is trending bigger, which means uh, you have, the property management company have to give a lot more concession to attract people, right? Uh, and that just show a trend that is not doing very well. And after that 2013, it was really good because, you know, they have to offer very less concession. The 
the gap between these two lines is very small and start now it start going up again so you would have seen the trend on, on what's happening in Houston somewhere in 2015 because if you see this chart this is already opening up right the delta between these two line is opening up already so so this is city of Houston um, and down here on this report um, I mean, I, I don't usually look at everything else, floor breakdown for a market analysis, maybe for individuals. Down here, it shows all the other market, uh, Dallas, College Station, San Antonio, and Corpus Christi. And it compares each one of the city compared to Houston. Um, so in a short, in a short, uh, um, in a quick look over here, Dallas, uh, there is 17%, 17.5% additional concession. Whereas College Station, there's like 77.8% uh, concession being given compared to last year. San Antonio uh, is negative 0 0.3, which is doing better. Uh, I mean, maybe there's no change at all. But I, I'm going to share San Antonio in a short while because that's uh, that's where I, I do a lot of my uh, multifamily investment uh, because that's a very, it's a different, uh, unique uh, concession strategy there. Whereas Corpus Christi, if you look at it, uh, is 91%. So compared to last year, this year, a lot more companies, 91%, almost 100% of the company, property management company are giving concession, which means the the demand there is really low. So let's look at, uh, let's look at Dallas, or maybe we should look at San Antonio. Let's, let's look at uh, Dallas or San Antonio, and we can see, we can go to the next one. Um, where is, ah, okay, well, this is Dallas, uh, this is Dallas Fort Worth, right? So, so let me close Houston. Let's look at Dallas over here. So looking at Dallas, if you see uh, occupancy is 91.7, there is a slight annual change compared to last year. Um, keep in mind, all this is a snapshot of one month, right? Um, so you're looking at a one month data, you know, so if you're really interested in one specific city, you want to download this report every month as they publish it, then you can check a trend as well. So if you look at Dallas, there were 12,335 uh, units added. Uh, I mean, Dallas this year, 2017, supposed to be one of the biggest uh, unit addition. Uh, I think it's like 50,000 over units being added. So everybody's a bit uh, panicky in Dallas, but it could just absorb it. But if you're looking at Dallas, uh, 12,000 units were added, uh, were built by, uh, this is, as I said, this is class A. 12,000 units were built, but there's 13,000 units being absorbed. So that means there's a lot more jobs in Dallas market compared to the unit. So this is a good trend. That means it shows the, the whatever units being built is being absorbed by the current job growth there. So that's a really good indicator. And if you look at the, uh, Offering concession numbers is plus 7.5 percent, which is not bad. Uh, but they are company company that is giving concessions. And the same thing, if you go to the uh, to the right uh, over here, if you look at the market versus effective rent, it's very very tight as well. So there is no indication of uh, slowness in Dallas from what I see over here, because market versus effective rent uh, chart doesn't show any opening compared to you know 2007 2008 where the recession happened. So, um, and looking down there, if you look at, uh, we saw the Houston and we're seeing Austin right now. In Austin, there was 36% uh, offered concession. So, San Antonio, we look at it right now. I'm not sure why Oklahoma City is here, uh, but it shows the plus 33% is being offered. So, we look at two market, and uh, let me quickly go through. San Antonio and we can go to another city. Uh, so let's look at San Antonio. Um, this is Dallas. So San Antonio. So if you look at San Antonio, uh, the interesting fact in San Antonio is uh, Occupancy slightly improved compared to last year. Uh, units added was 3,781 units. These are basically units were built um, and released to the market, 3,700. But unit absorbed was 4,800. So in terms of job-wise, um, it's really good. 
because the job has been uh, the the job growth has been able to absorb the the unit uh, addition, right? Um, and if you look at the offering concession for overall market, which is San Antonio stabilized property, as I mentioned, this is class A, B, and C stabilized property. Even though the offering concession is high, but the delta is is pretty less, like 1.2 percent. So compared to last year, it's only like 1.2 percent companies offering more or offering less. Actually, in fact, this is people are giving less concession this year. But uh, what's interesting about San Antonio market is always been a concession market. So if you look at the chart between the offering uh, market rent and effective rents, it's always been uh, almost the uh, same delta or I would say same difference. So San Antonio in general, if you can see from this chart, it's always a concession market. That means almost everybody, or almost everybody offer concessions. It's just that there's no difference from last year to this year. So, so this is a good, trend even though it shows opening over here it shows a good trend that means it's just how the market is everybody expect concessions and but there's not much of huge swing from last year to this year um, let's look at Austin and we can go to another city where is Austin over here so Let me make sure that I'm not missing out any big question. So if you look at this, um, so this is Austin. So Austin, uh, the occupancy is 91%, slightly drop. I, I think it's not much of change. There was 5,000 unit added. Uh, the unit absorb is 7,000. So that's a big delta. That means a lot more job growth happening in Austin compared to uh, units being added, which is a really good indicator. Um, the offering concession is 70%, um, but the number of company that's offering concession is 30% more. So um, yeah, that just shows uh, there's a lot more concession need to be given to attract renters uh, so that is this is not uh, very favorable whereas the job uh, growth in Austin it's really favorable and if you look at the um, the chart over here uh, on the right it shows the market versus effective rent for Austin let me make this small so it shows for the past, uh, since 2012, it has been very, very tight. I don't think so anybody was giving any concession at that time until 2015 where the concessions start to open up. So for the past, uh, what, since 2016, there's a lot more companies uh, giving concession to attract tenants. So basically, the demand has slowed down if you look at this uh, in terms of uh, attracting tenants at the uh, market rate that they want. Um, I don't think so. I want to go to that uh, over here. Um, let me see. One thing I saw, uh, Weko and Clean Temple is surprisingly, it's a pretty strong market as well. Uh, because uh, the number of, I mean, the growth on uh, concession for Weko Temple Clean is really low compared to, if you look at Houston and Dallas, um, I mean, San Antonio, as I told you guys, uh, is a concession market, so there's not much of difference there uh, compared to even Austin. It looks like <laughs> it was surprising to me looking at Waco, Temple, and Killing looks to be pretty strong market because there's not many concession being given. Um, so let me look at Sacramento because someone asked for Sacramento. We go out of uh, Texas and see whether this can be looked at or not. So looking at Sacramento, Sacramento is one of the strongest uh, <laughs> city in multifamily, but let's look at the data and see. So um, so Sacramento, the occupancy is really good. It's 95% from last year. Units added were 21, but unit absorbed was 741. This shows a lot of job growth in Sacramento. Offering concession is very, very low. It's only 3% and there's less people, 17% less people offering concession. 
um, oh sorry, it's on this, so less negative 16% is offering concession. And if you look at on the right side, it's very, very thin offering concession and I would say there's not much of change. So that's this is a very strong market. If you look at it, um, let me look at the questions uh, so I make sure they understand. Can you analyze Atlanta? Atlanta is very interesting. Let's look at Atlanta. So looking at, sorry, looking at Atlanta, there were 4,000 units in added. Uh, that means there's a supply of 4,000 units, but unit absorbed, that means people who come with new jobs and snap up all this class A property is 7,000. This is a very strong market, uh, 3,000 over units delta here. They are still in short supply over there. And if you look at concession, it's uh, it's really low concession and negative 1.1%. And if you look at this chart, this is very interesting. Atlanta is a very strong market because there is no, virtually there's no concession being offered. Most of the units are getting snapped up over there. Very strong market. Um, the other strong market, if you if you play with this all this data, you will see it's like Orlando and uh, um, yeah, Orlando is one of the stronger market from what I've seen. Uh, just looking at the data, let me look at the questions here. Portland, Oregon. So let's look at one more market before we go to the other website, which can give you other data. Portland, Oregon. I used to live in Oregon. Um, wow, <laughs> this is different. So looking at Portland, Oregon, let's look at the 2,000 units were added, uh, 3,900 people with new jobs and came and snapped up all these Class A units. So job growth wise is very strong. Um, I'm not sure why the is NA over here for annual change. Maybe the city doesn't, I don't know, maybe it's confidential or what, but if you look at market versus effective rent, it seems to be constant. So this is a good, I mean, it's a concession market. Um, and look at the occupancy. Okay, now I get it. So it looks like the data has been just recently being collected by ALN. That's why the last year data is not there. But occupancy wise is good uh, since past two years. So every, keep in mind all the other cities we looked at is almost like what, five, six years kind of data or maybe more than that, I think more than 10 years. Uh, but Portland, Oregon, they just started tracking it past two years. So um, ALN data does not have a lot of uh, information on Portland. So that's on the uh, alndata.com. You know, only look at few things. One is job growth because basically, if you look at unit absorb, unit absorb, that basically shows people coming in into the state, getting a class A apartment. I mean, people with jobs, new growth, new growth is going to come in and get uh, the new inventory, right? So that's going to show uh, in the unit absorb on the top left. Whereas unit added is uh, the supply itself, and the delta shows that um, whether the units are being absorbed or not. Um, we saw in Houston, it was the other way around. Basically, there's more supply over there. It's oversupplied, uh, less demand, whereas all the other cities that we saw um, had the more demand compared to supply. And the concession trend is very important for you guys to analyze as well. So that's on the um, ALN data. The next one is Yardi monthly, monthly reports. So if you click on, um, let me click on this. Um, if you go to this, I'm going to send out the slides later on. So no worries about that. But yardimetrics.com slash publications. If you go to here, let me close all the ALN data number. Um, so you'll come here. This is Yardi Metrics. Yardi is a big multifamily research company. They own a lot of uh, multifamily uh, property management software. Um, so they can collect a lot of data out there and this report is free and I've seen one of the best, inf 
best uh, research data from YRD on different market. So once you come here, you can just you know click to sign up, and you get a monthly report uh, that comes to your inbox, right? Um, so if you click here, subscribe to Matrix publication, you can see all these reports on a monthly basis. Um, so usually a monthly report, I'm just going to go through the what I already downloaded. This is shows the monthly report from YRD. Uh, which show, talks about rent survey. Uh, this is June 2017. Um, you can read all whatever they've written. Multifamily rent jumped by 12 in June. Um, national average rent is going up. This is year over year rent growth. All asset class. All asset class is class A and class B and C, right? So it shows all the major market over here compared to what's the average. If you look at it, Sacramento is the top rent growth over here. After that, Seattle, uh, Inland, Orlando, LA, Phoenix, Atlanta is also very strong. Dallas is strong. I mean, and after that, you have uh, San Antonio, Austin here, and all the other cities as well, Miami and Houston. Houston is on the negative rent growth right now, if you can see over here. Um, but this doesn't talk a lot about the class B and C that a lot of us invest. Uh, Class B and C is you look at it down here. So if you look at this two chart, which which they send out on a monthly basis, they break it out into two. One is called lifestyle asset class. This is basically lifestyle. The class A people, we are not interested in this so much. But the second uh, table down here, rent growth by renter by necessity. This is the class B and C. This shows the growth of rent on class B and C. This is a very important indicator because it shows where does your city stands in terms of the national average. Um, so Sacramento is still the strongest. Uh, Houston is uh, it's the smallest but still growing, which is good. Compared to the class A in Houston, it's really negative over here. So, so this chart, if you're interested in class B and C, rental by necessity will be the best uh, chart to see. And if you go down uh, to this report, uh, they talk about occupancy, all class asset classes. Uh, may not be interesting if you want to look at all asset classes, but you can look at renter by necessity uh, because that shows the occupancy for class B and C. And if you see the last trailing three months, uh, it says lifestyle rents uh, show some strength. That's the class A, you know. Uh, but if you're not interested in class A, you can go down to renter by necessity. Um, trailing three months sequential. So it shows whether the each uh, city is how well they are doing right now. So trailing 12 months, uh, Sacramento, Inland Empire maintain top status. Let me go down. I think there's other interesting facts down there. Okay, so down here they shows the employment supply and occupancy trend forecast rent growth for all the cities. So let me look at um, some of the cities that we looked at just now. So we looked at Dallas right now. So year over year rent growth is 3.6%. Forecast rent growth of 4.3 and occupancy is 95.6. So Portland is over here too. Um, Atlanta is over here 3.6. San Antonio is 1.1. Austin is 0.6 rent growth. Um, so basically it's all available over here. You can see whether the market that you want to invest or investing is going to do well because you know this is the market swing that's going to carry your investment. Um, yeah, I mean all the data is here. You can look at it yourself. I'm just pointing you where to see, right? And this shows some of the charts: uh, market rent growth by asset class. Uh, basically, the if I remember, the blue line is the renters by necessity. Almost all cities, the rent growth has slowed down, uh, which shows a generic economic situation of the multifamily, the rent growth has slowed down. Um, and in general, right, so if you look at Houston, you can see, you know, it's just dipping down there. Um, let me see what are the data you can see on this chart. Okay, so here they define what is renters by necessity, which basically, you know, it's a class B and C people and lifestyle is the renters by choice, which is class A. Uh, and this shows the improvement ratings. I think that's it. So you can subscribe to this data. This will show you how well certain markets are performing. This will be a good tool for you to choose on uh, go, go and uh, invest in a market which is booming, right? Uh, because it's just uh, 
much better backbone there in terms of the market. Um, let's go to the third one, which is basically the IRR reports. Uh, so IRR report, as I mentioned, is the report that's done that's uh, done by uh, let me see where is IRR so IRR once you click on the link I give you it comes to here which is basically IRR is a huge organization which many of the appraiser reports to and this data a lot of it comes from appraisals and their own research so if you come to this this uh, link that I'm going to give you it shows you can come and choose whichever market you want um, over here and you can choose the property type as multifamily and you can click search and the, the report will show up. So they usually do like annually and they do a mid-year review. So if I look at, uh, if I click here to download, I think you can go up to like five, uh, five uh, cities uh, before they ask you to buy things. So, so you, unless you're investing in more than five, then you have to buy the reports. Otherwise you can get this report free. So if you go and see the, so whenever you click download on this report, um, you'll get a report like this. So let's look at this report and let's look at the key information over here. Um, I mean, you can read all this. This was cap rate, whether it's improving, are the asking rank, whether it's improving, but this is all class A. And they put a summary on where is the market in general. But I like to look at this particular cycle on where is the city compared to the cycle and this shows um, Dallas is, is on the last stage of expansion um, I'm not sure whether it'll go to over hyper supply or not but it just show where we are right now I mean as you looked at just now the slides that I showed you on uh, on Austin compared to let me see here if you look at past uh, what uh, 14 years they were one, let me see which one is hyper supply over here, which one is uh, expansion. So where is number six here? So, so even they were at expansion number five and then went to six and then came down. So, so it can go up and down, but at least uh, you should know where, where is the market is. And uh, let's look at another, another market here using IR report. Um, Let's look at Austin. Um, I think I already select multi-family. So this shows Austin report, media report. Let me click on this. Let me download it and quickly see where Austin is in that uh, cycle of uh, four stages. Yeah, so this shows Austin. Um, yeah, you can read all of this. I'm not going to go through this, uh, but uh, I like to look at where they are in terms of the market cycle. So Austin looks like an expansion stage, which is just uh, okay, right? Uh, the best market to buy is at the where is at the recovery stage, but you need to look at the 2017 IRR report to see which market is there on the recovery stage because the potential for for the rent growth is highest over here when it goes from recovery to expansion, right? But if I remember correctly, there's not many market uh, is at the recovery stage. Maybe we should look at that and see which which market is at the recovery stage. Let me look at it. I thought I had the 2017 report. just for our learning sake. <laughs> Let me see, is there any market that has a recovery stage? So this is the 2017 IRR report. Uh, looks like there's no market on recovery stage. Everybody is on full blast, either it's an expansion or hyper supply. So you, nobody's in recession as well right now. So if you look at it, um, Washington DC in hyper supply, uh, Atlanta is in hyper supply, uh, Houston is in hyper supply, uh, first stage of hyper supply. So Austin is an expansion. What are the city here which is interesting for us? 
Um, I, Dallas is on expansion third stage, yeah, as we talked about. I think, uh, yeah, that's all. Basically, we have gone through three different reports, which you can quickly go through and look at the market that you're interested at um, and get some idea um, on how, where you are, the market that you're interested in, where they are in the cycle. Um, so just a quick look and then it'll basically, you know, you'll just become a more educated investor. So let me look at some of the questions uh, that you have here. Um, oh, that's a lot of questions. Hold on, let me just open this a bit wider. Okay. Can you look at secondary market like Tyler and Longview? If it's available, it's available, but I, I don't think so. A lot of secondary market is uh, available. Um, so you have to go into, uh, yeah, I, I would say this is a lot of limited to primary and some secondary market, not tertiary market. Is the 12K units added in June or since June of last year? I believe the 12K units were added in June. Uh, it's basically the supply that uh, for that particular month, how much unit has been released to to the uh, general public. In stabilized property, which is the difference between, okay. So that's a good question. Um, if you look at the ALN data, let me quickly go through the ALN. Um, let's look at, uh, Let's look at Houston. I'm just uh, because somebody asked about the question. The table below the the top table. Where's Houston here? Okay, so. On, so the question was asked on uh, what does this mean on Houston market stabilized property unit change versus unit absorbed. So unit change basically shows uh, this is not a new inventory. This is the unit that people are moving around within the units that's already been built. So 17,000 people moved around within the existing property. Unit absorb is negative 713. Um, I believe this means that people are leaving the city negative 713. That's why it's going negative. That means people are getting out of the city. So it's, so that's why you have a negative number. And let's look at another city here. So at least we can get a lot more comparison now. Let's look at Austin here um, on that table to see the existing people, right? So, so over here, the unit change is 6,865. So this is basically uh, 6,865 people moved around within the current properties, whereas unit absorbed 4,300. This is people coming out of state, but coming into class B and C, 4,300. So uh, this shows the people coming and grabbing the class B and C on the stabilized properties. This is more the lease ups. Hope I answered that question. Can you explain how to open up the report from market review page once you choose a market uh, trying to open and select the market but don't know how to open the report? It should be uh, it should be automatic once you op once you click on it should automatically open the report once you click uh, the city that you want. So that's how the report open. Can we please look at Atlanta? Yeah, we did that. What does average concession package mean? Average concession package means how much concession are we offering? Um, for example, uh, we can offer one month rent, free rent when they come in or two weeks free rent or $100 from the first month rent or two months free rent. So it, it shows how deep average concession package means how deep you have to go to give that concession. So if you see here, 4.9% uh, and then 
if you look at the class A is 5.4% or how deep you have to give concession. That's what it means by average concession package. Um, can you analyze Waco? I think, uh, I don't think so. We want to do that right now due to the time, but, uh, basically we did look at Waco in a short while. It seems to be pretty good in terms of the, um, average concession percentage change from last year to this year. Do you care about the rents? Uh, we see so the thing is we we want to look at the the rent basically matters when you want to buy a property. But if you want to look at the rent growth, you want to look at the rent trend, right? How does the rent change per on a timeline basis? So so I don't think so. We if you want to look at market performance over a timeline, you want to look at just a, a absolute number of rent that will be more important for you to buy. When you want to buy a property, you want to know about how much this, the property is uh, churning out in terms of rent. I don't think so. Any market recovery stage now. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's what the data shows. There's no recovery. There's no recession market. Uh, it's all in uh, either in hyper supply or in expansion. Current tight market may mean lagging supply when the supply comes in to go to hyper supply. So how would you explore right from the scenario can be three to six years. We wouldn't know what's going to happen in the next three to six years. So I'm not an economist to predict that, but I would say that, you know, um, if this is just a data point for you to choose. And if you look at, uh, for me, I think it's, when I look at this particular market versus effective RAND, this is a good indicator to see on our weather because if you look at the last if you look at 2008 2009 that if you have done this chart before that you would know that it's already opening up there's going to be trouble on the horizon so this is a good chart from what i see the job indicator is a good chart the offering concession is a good chart so it basically shows a snapshot and this chart shows a timeline so you need to decide on what to do in the next three to six years Where's the best crop to see job growth? There's no, there's no, unless you plot these units added versus unit absorbed on a monthly basis and you see unit absorbed minus unit added is increasing. That shows the job growth that's relevant to um, tenants, right? Tenant in class B and C and class, sorry, in class A, then you can get a job growth trend and not all job growth are good. I mean, in general, all job growth are good, but you know, if, if they're hiring all uh, professionals, you know, who are not, who doesn't need uh, multifamily, then it doesn't mean anything for the multifamily industry. But if you if you plot, if you take every month this report and do a delta between unit absorbed minus unit added, you would get a job growth for that city. How to analyze overall economic prediction? I'm not an expert in, in economic prediction. Are the IRR reports fee based or free? IRR reports are free uh, for the first five, five to six reports. After that, you have to pay. Um, but the annual IRR reports are free. So once you go to subscribe, they annually they send you a report, which is a really good report. Um, so you definitely should just subscribe and read it in your time. I mean, since a lot of people are investing huge sum of money into multifamily, I would suggest that everybody read some report about the market. If you had picked one of the three tools, which one is the most valuable? I would say the um, the ALN data would be the most valuable um, because it shows the trend of the market versus effective rents and the concession, percentage con concession. That is just my opinion, but um, there's a lot of other reports which is very good as well. IRR said Atlanta is hyper supply yet ALN data say it's great market which are more unit supply how you think about it I think it's I think it's a really good market but all these really good markets like Dallas Austin and Atlanta there's a lot of huge supply that's coming in 2017 so 2017 is the peak year for all the supply to be distributed on all these top cities after 2017, everything drops back to a lower level. There's not much supply. A lot of uh, developers have stopped uh, building units and releasing it. So 
2017 is very key because a lot of supply are being released to the market right now. <laughs> Since all the markets are in expansion now, is it still a good time to invest in apartments? Uh, I would absolutely, I don't know. I think it's a good uh, time to invest in apartment and invest in apartment which uh, a lot of equity in it. So your market swings really doesn't matter. But I would say if you have a market behind you, uh, it, it becomes really good because now you can afford to make mistakes, right? Uh, and market will still carry you. Right, so that's why some of these really good markets has been doing very well just because of the market. It's not because of the property itself, but a lot of people are moving in, the demand is high, so so you can give them an average apartment and people will still buy it. So market is very important, um, but if you can get a, a really good market and a, and a deal with really good equity, really good potential, and a really good lead, or really good uh, deal sponsor uh, that makes it the best deals but you know I'm not an expert I'm not economist uh, in advising people on how to invest in apartment uh, do your own due diligence let me look at the next question is it useful to ask for asking rents across uh, different markets and target higher rents, though maybe it's related to prices? So the asking rents is the uh, market rent. So when you, if you see this chart over here, the market rent is the asking rent, and the effective rent is is the concession that the property management have to give to get a tenant in and uh, get the occupancy high. Does ALN data show all classes A, B, C? Yes. As I say, the top part on the left is A, primarily A, because this is all the new, all the new units, and bottom one is primarily dominated by class B and C. Can you separate? Look at class C data. I don't think so. ALN shows that. Um, you may have to pay for that kind of report, uh, but uh, if you look at the let me think, look at uh, if you, I think usually class B and C is grouped up together, um, but you know there's a lot of reports out there. I mean I believe the um, what's the other report uh, that we looked at right now? The IRR report and the Yardi matrix report does give uh, renters by necessity, which is a class B and C. So a lot of times all these reports are grouped up together. Um, so I don't think so we can look at class C only unless you start paying for it. For job growth numbers, get the federal numbers put out each month, covers each city, I believe so. Um, the RD matrix report just now we looked at, uh, there is a row that shows the job growth on each city. So you, that should be a good data for you to look at the job growth. Okay, is there any other questions? I'm done with all the questions. We are 754 right now in Texas. Let me see one more question here. If Austin shows negative 17.4 concession, then the effective one should be high. Market rent. Concession change. No, the, let me see which one are we talking about here. Average concession package, yes. So I think the question is, uh, Austin is showing negative 17.4% over here, which shows that the depth or the value of concession or the amount of concession that uh, they have to give compared to last year has decreased, which can be a good trend. I mean, they, they just so that instead of two months uh, free rent, they're giving uh, maybe one month free rent right now. All right. Uh, can you provide the slides for recording to us later? Yeah, I will send out the slides and the recording later on. So hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions, send mail to me at james at Achieve Investment Group. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can answer and invest wisely uh, in any market that you're thinking of investing. Thank you guys and girls. You're going to be ending the webinar right now. Bye.